By 1973, the Godzilla franchise was on its last legs. Television was quickly becoming the preferred way for adult audiences to entertain themselves, leaving children as the only major demographic still going to the theater. And so, recognizing this, Toho, out of desperation, fast-tracked another Godzilla movie, this time with the intention of mimicking the trends at the time, and thus giving kids everything that they wanted. The survival of the franchise depended on it. The result is Godzilla vs. Megalon, a movie that, for better and for worse, symbolizes how far the series had fallen. An inventor named Goro, along with his younger brother and close friend, finds themselves being stalked by a duo of mysterious men, and discovers that they are the agents of Cetopia, an underground civilization that seeks to punish the surface dwellers for their reckless atomic bomb testing. To accomplish this, they send their god monster Megalon to destroy everything in its path. Soon, Goro's robot Jet Jaguar sets it upon himself to fight Megalon, but when Gigan shows up to add to the trouble, it's up to Godzilla to come to the rescue and help Jet Jaguar fight back. Godzilla vs. Megalon marked a new low for a once illustrious franchise. Even by Godzilla standards, it is cheap, silly, and absurd, with little originality to stand on. Once again, an ancient or alien civilization has a bone to pick with humanity, and sends a couple of mind-controlled monsters to dole out some punishment. And once again, Godzilla and an ally of his choosing comes to the rescue. It was clear Godzilla was becoming increasingly irrelevant, and this was a last-ditch effort to keep the series relevant in a time when television shows like Ultraman were popular. And so everything, from the plot to the characters to Jet Jaguar himself, is meant to mimic the kinds of shows that captured the attention of Japanese kids at the time. Given this, there is little actual plot to speak of, and what little of it there is exists merely as a reason for the monsters to do their thing. This is unfortunate, because there are some interesting concepts in the film. In a more thought-out film, Cetopia could have had some potential to be quite fascinating, but here it is presented as an afterthought. The one-dimensional characters also act in ways that are unnatural just to move the plot towards the inevitable monster brawl. More so than almost any other Godzilla movie, it is clear that this story exists only to serve as an excuse for rubber monsters to punch each other. And punch each other well they do. For all its many, many faults, Godzilla vs. Megalon excels in delivering exactly what it set out to, and nothing more. Much like Godzilla vs. Gigan before it, the film doesn't waste much time before bringing the action, and once it gets going, it rarely lets up. The final fight, which takes up the last third of the film, is a fever dream of rubber-suited monster mayhem, and is thus a joy to watch. All four monsters are genuine characters with discernible personalities that kids can latch on to, with Godzilla and Jet Jaguar paragons of virtue, and Megalon and Gigan cackling bullies who need to be taught a lesson. There are some gloriously goofy moments that are sure to make you crack a smile as long as you remember not to take it seriously. It's non-stop goofy fun that makes everything that came before it worth the wait. And credit where credit is due. Godzilla vs. Megalon birthed two of the franchise's most cherished creations. Much like Gigan, Megalon is an inspired and creatively designed monster with some really cool abilities and an obnoxious personality that makes him a lot of fun to root against. And Jet Jaguar, while an obvious Ultraman knockoff, is the opposite, an underdog that's really easy to root for who even gets his own kickin' theme song that, once you hear it, will stay with you forever. In so many ways, Godzilla vs. Megalon has no right to be as entertaining as it is. Despite a phoned-in direction by Jun Fukuda, despite a nonsensical bare-bones plot, despite cardboard characters, and despite yet more stock footage, it all falls aside when you get to the glorious 2v2 fight that closes the film, an extended action scene punctuated by great moments and humorous interactions between the monsters. It's just fun, there's really no other way to put it. It's right up there with the silliest Godzilla has ever been, and for some, this is a travesty. But if you watch it with kids, or even with a couple of friends, it's actually one of the more entertaining movies in the franchise, and goes to show that even at his trashiest, Godzilla still knows how to give the people what they want. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.